Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography. I'm Ted Forbes. Today we're going to talk about how to use a light meter. Okay, now what is a light meter and why would you want to use it? Well, meters that you might find inside your camera, especially if you have a very current up-to-date camera, um, they're, they're very advanced. Um, they do all kinds of wonderful things to calculate what it is you're trying to shoot and what the correct exposure is going to be. Uh, but I will say this. Um, it's not always right. It is a computer, it's not a human, and it's doing its best to guess at what you're trying to do. But there are situations where you want to do something with your image that is unconventional. Okay, Maybe you want to underexpose it because you want a real dark moody quality or you want to overexpose it because you want kind of this bright blown out thing. Um, and your camera is going to be less likely to be able to uh, figure those things out for you. If you're shooting film and you're shooting zone system, something like that, you have to have a um, a uh, handheld meter that will do spot metering. Um, anyway, there's a lot of uses for it. This is not a very thrifty investment. Um, a good light meter is not a cheap thing. They're gonna cost a lot of money. In fact, uh, especially for 35 millimeter cameras, uh, when you buy those, most of what you're paying for inside is the meter. And so they're gonna equate, they're not as much as a camera, but you're, depending on what kind of features you want, you're probably looking at spending between $250 to $500 for a really, really nice meter. But unlike a camera, it doesn't outdate itself. As long as it works, it works. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a fee you spend once and uh, I will say that it's completely worth it. Um, it will drastically, once you learn how to use a light meter, make vast improvements in your photography. Okay, And this one is, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it's got quite a few of them. And I will kind of talk you through here and show you what some of these do. Um, there's basically uh, three ways that this particular meter, this is a Sekonic L558R, and I know there's already a new model out that's made this, uh, I wouldn't say obsolete because everything works on here and it's a meter. Uh, but the three things that it does basically is, is it measures uh, incident lighting, it measures reflective lighting, and this will also measure flash. Okay, and there's a couple ways that it will do flash, uh, which is kind of nice because if you're doing in-studio things and uh, you need to be able to kind of know what your exposure is going in and compare and contrast and, and kind of work with it a little bit, it will measure flash readings. Um, not every light meter will, and that's kind of what puts you into a little more expense is when you have ways of reading um, uh, flash light. But anyway, as far as just uh, um, incident lighting and reflective lighting, let me talk about what those are. There's a little white plastic dome up here and this is how you measure incident lighting. Now what incident lighting is is it, it's real easy. Let's say that you're shooting a portrait of me right now and we have a little scene here okay and you need to know what the light is measured at. Well there's a little button on the side and once you've turned it on you trigger the button and I have this set up in EV mode or exposure value mode right now which is just going to simply give me an exposure value. Okay now I just simply click that and it's telling me that I'm at 8.7 for my exposure value. Okay. Now, how do I turn that into the correct aperture shutter speed combination? Well, it's real easy to do on this meter. I simply switch modes over, and now that I'm in what is kind of referred to simply as is aperture priority mode. Okay. And so now when I take that reading, if I have my aperture, which is this big number here, set at 1.4, see the little F indicates the F stop. Okay, so I have 1.4 on my reading. Uh, my shutter speed over here, the T stands for time, is going to be 60. Okay. Now as I spin this wheel, it simply Remember, there's a mathematical equation that combines the shutter speed with the aperture to come up with the correct exposure. And I have set my ISO, we talked about in the last podcast, at 400 in this case. And so if I go down to 2, we're in pretty low light right now, but uh, we go down to 2 and my time is 30. And you can see that each time I go up a stop, it removes a stop off the time. Okay, So that gives me a reading incident light. Um, of, uh, of, of where my exposure needs to be. The one thing that's nice about this particular model too is it has actually, this is a three-dimensional dome, so what I've done is I've, I've just simply measured a flat plane of light and uh, if I pull that up it pulls the dome out and uh, actually gives me a 3D averaging. So this is really nice if you're shooting a portrait and maybe the individual's face is, is not lit flat, it's lit from one side and you have come some shadows on the other side. This will kind of simulate that and you simply hit the button and it goes. Now a spot meter and this is going to be kind of harder to show in the video, uh, but it basically will measure 
what the exposure value of a specific area is. Okay, now we're going to talk about zone system and Ansel Adams later on when we get into black and white film photography a little more. And that's where this comes in very handy. But the exposure value in a spot type of situation, this is not reflective. Well, it's reflective off a surface. What I simply do is I have to move this knob over to the spot metering mode. So it turns this off and turns the see through on. And this is simply just simply a uh, kind of a viewfinder I can look through and there's a little tiny spot in the middle and it zooms right in on a little area. So for instance, uh, again, if you're taking uh, a picture of me and you want to make sure that you have uh, enough shades of light in your black and white photos, which is what the zone system will do for you, maybe you would take a spot metering off my shirt, which is black. You might take a spot reading off some of the highlights coming out of this metal light or the wall in the back knowing that those are white. And then you can see what the exposure value difference is uh, between the light and the dark. And then you can kind of do an averaging on that to come up with your, your shutter speed and aperture combination. Uh, the other thing that's nice about this particular meter is I have a memory button on the front. So if you hold it like a trigger, like you're going to do some spot metering, my thumb is on the, uh, the button that takes the reading. So that's where I figure out where I want to take my reading from. Then I push the button to take the reading. And I can put it into memory. And you can put multiple spots of light into the, uh, into the memory. And then I have ways on here of just simply going in and averaging all those readings to give me kind of an average exposure of, of all of them, which is kind of nice if you're out doing a landscape and you're not really worried about zone system necessarily, but you want to make sure that you kind of get everything in there. But anyway, that's basically what a light meter is and how you're going to use it. Um, in the next podcast, we're going to talk about metering through your camera. But I really wanted to talk about light meters first, exposure value, and what you're looking at there. Now, metering off a camera, I'm going to tell you in advance here, is a little different because what it is is called through the lens metering. So it's simply metering your entire scene as it sees it, which is theoretically pretty accurate way to go. Um, and there's a lot you can do with learning how to use your camera meter too. Uh, there are situations where you don't have time to sit here and take light readings and uh, goof around with that kind of thing. You're, you're shooting street photography or a wedding or something like that and you need to be a lot faster. <clears throat> so it's worth it in that case to learn your camera meter inside out and how to manipulate that if it's not getting exactly the exposure that you want. Uh, you'll also learn how it behaves a little bit too. So anyway, I hope that helps. This has been the Art of Photography. And thanks for watching.